like it put you to sleep what put you to sleep this game so slow yeah yeah the game definitely slow the game is definitely slow Daddy. Daddy. what's up bro no okay I'll let you play in the living okay Good defense. Perfect. Good shot. Boy. Okay. Still, hey, <laughs> damn, my boy, I get that passing up. That's green. Yo, let me find out. That's a good move. Good move. Uh. Oh. That boy will not lean that corner. Hit like, nah, you can have that too. Good move. Okay. Boy, right there came the hoop, man. Boy. Good. That's what happens when you don't give it back to the guy that's scoring the fucking last seven points. It's there. You trying to scare me? If in the pass it. Oh wait, he's not gonna give it to that dude, bro. Yo, are you serious, bro? This dude just scored all them points and can't get the ball back. That's wow. Yeah, he had to be off my team. Right there. What's up, JD? I'm letting go. <laughs> the fuck was that? Damn, that's very early. Bro, this shit is broken. Good D. Turn over. Oh, good. Hey, yo, right here. 
Damn, <laughs> sports scared of it. <laughs> I'll put it in the trash. Put it in the trash. Sport middle. The shot. Yes, sir. Rebound. Green. You did you put it in trash? Good job. Good shot from downtown. Oh, you scared. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Green, come on. Now let's go to budgeting. Budgeting is simple. I'm not gonna, I'm obviously not gonna pull out a whiteboard. Maybe I need to set something like that up for you guys, but I think everybody in my comment section is smart enough to handle this. Budgeting is simple, guys. When I budget, I just take a piece of paper and I do it old school. I take a piece of paper, I draw a line down the middle, I maybe make a T, you know, at the top. I might top it off, make a T. And one side's gonna say incoming. The other side says outgoing. I operate in incoming and outgoing. I'm an old soldier, man. I got incoming and I got outgoing. All right. And that's what it is. That's how my mind works. Incoming, outgoing. So I am going to have one side of that paper is going to say incoming. How much money do I have coming in or from where? W-2, my job, you know, uh, business. I do hair in the kitchen. I cut grass, whatever it is. All my incoming money on one side. I want all my incoming on one side, how much money do I have coming in? Get it down. I don't really get down to the penny. Um, I usually like to round it off for fast math. So, you know, if I had, if every month I check my bank account and it's consistent with $5,865, okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and say for the incoming, I'm going to go ahead and say I get $5,800. You get what I'm saying? I'm just going to go ahead and round it off. I'm going to scratch the 65. I'm going to say I get 5,800 bucks and you'll see why in a second. So if my every month, if I get my every month, if my bank account says that I get three thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars, I'm just going to say I get thirty three hundred dollars. I'm just going to round it off. I get thirty three hundred three thousand three hundred and thirty five. I'm just going to I get thirty three hundred. My incoming is thirty three hundred. My outgoing, this is going to be your rent, your lights, your water, your gas, your child support if you have it, your car insurance, your car and payment. Um, this is going to be your food. Food needs to be two categories. Food needs to be your actual groceries because we all buy groceries for our home that we cook, whatever that looks like to you. And this also, we all eat out. So you need to have your groceries. And then you need to have your eat out or your food or whatever you choose to call that. But you need to make sure that you have your restaurant money. 
So I do rent, lights, water, gas, uh, child support, uh, insurance, car insurance, life insurance, whatever you got, everything that's coming out, everything that you're spending money on. And instead of just putting down the exact amount, like I said, I like to round off, say that if I have a payment that comes out every month and it's 1865, I'm making it 20. And you're going to find out why in just a second. I'm, I'm rounding up. So on my incoming, I'm going to go down. I'm going to round down to the lowest. I'm not going to round up and act like I have more money coming in. I'm going to act like I have less coming in. And on my outgoing, I'm rounding up. Okay. And the reason I do this, I don't want to confuse you guys. I hope I'm explaining this right. But the reason I do this is because it leaves wiggle room for those little extra expenses. Maybe somebody decided, you know, you guys all, everybody operates just like I do. And maybe you guys looked at your payment of something or something and it charged you three extra dollars or the bank charged you three dollars for an ATM withdrawal or whatever. They, they, there's always those little hidden payments. You got gas and it charged you whatever, three, uh, 65 cents or whatever. There's always, you guys know what I'm talking about. There's always those little hidden fees that come out. You bought minutes for your phone and you had to pay that extra whatever, you know, taxes on it. So when you put down your phone and you say fifty five dollars a month, just say sixty. If you have on a pre if you're on a prepaid month to month, you know, you know, it's like fifty five or sixty five bucks. So if your phone is fifty five dollars, just say sixty because, you know, you're going to be taxed. So I go ahead and I throw in extra money for taxes for those damn uh, debit card swiping fees. I just round up. So my income or my incoming, I round down. My outgoing, I round up. And then on the outgoing income, it should be pretty easy because you probably only have certain things incoming. You know, if, if you have way more the guys, I'm talking to the people that, that are, you know, if that only have like a W-2 that, you know, your typical Walmart worker, your Amazon factory worker, things like that. Your incoming, just your what you make. I want that down. I don't I want after taxes. I do not want. OK, I do not want before taxes. I don't care. I want after taxes. I want what actually is giving to you what hits your bank account in your incoming. I don't care about what the government takes. I don't care about any of that other stuff. I want what comes to your bank account. None of that other stuff is relevant right now when you're budgeting. There are no none of that other stuff is relevant right now. OK, just what actually comes to you that comes to your bank account. That's it. And then on the outgoing is going to be all your lights, water, gas, your rent, your uh, insurance, your child support, your food. Food needs to be broken down twice into groceries that you buy and fast food or restaurants where you eat at. If you have, I also want you to put in there beer, cigarettes, you know, your alcohol, your freaking weekends out. Like how much are you spending going out on the weekend? Give a rough estimate and round up. <clears throat> be honest. How much are you spending? And I want you to put all this in. You smoke cigarettes, you smoke weed, you know, whatever it is. I hope you don't have a drug problem. If you do, get past it. Get, get that shit out of your life so you can move forward and live a happy, successful life. Get alcohol out of your life so you can move forward and live a happy, successful life. You can't climb the mountain of success under the influence of drugs and alcohol, guys. It's not going to happen. It's just not. I, I harp on that so much. So you young people out there, I don't care what you see on TV in the movies. I don't care what rappers or any that shit is a lie. You're not going to be successful under the influence of anything. I, I'm j you're just not. 50 Cent is a great example of a businessman. Yeah, he's wrapped in this and that. But that man tells you, I don't do drugs. I don't drink. Chase that. Okay. For the young boys out there, chase people like that. Not the freaking pill head, not the coke head, not the crack head that's doing, telling you to do that stupid shit. Chase the man on top. You understand? Chase that. So that's budgeting in a nutshell. I got my side of incoming. Over here, I only want the dollar amount that comes to me. That's all I want. I don't care about any of that other crap. What do they give me? That's what I have to deal with. All right. I focus on my controllables and you should too. That is a controllable. That's what they give me. That's what I focus on. Over here, I have my outgoing, my rent, my lights, water, gas, 
food, everything. Break food down twice. Uh, alcohol, weed, cigarettes, tobacco, cigars, whatever you do. Uh, weekends, spending nights out. Your girlfriend, if you got a boyfriend and you spend money on them all the time, put it in there. And then I want you to add all that up and see what it is. And I want you to down at the bottom and I want you to see what that is. What does that look like? Incoming versus outgoing. What does that look like? Okay, now we got a full thing. I got, you know, thirty five hundred dollars a month coming in and I got, you know, thirty five hundred dollars a month going out. I'm I'm breaking even. I'm not even being able to save nothing. That's when I look at it and I say cigarettes are gone. And hey, man, I'm serious as shit. I did it. Don't tell me you can't do it. I did it. Cigarettes are gone. Alcohol's gone. Weekends out are gone. Friends are freaking gone. I'm done spending money on this girl or guy. They're going to have to see the situation and start helping me or kick rocks. Seriously. If your partner is not on the same page with you, it's never going to work, man. It's never going to work. Gone, gone, gone. I'm scratching everything off. For me, I got all the way down. Netflix, gone. Hulu, gone. Disney Plus, gone. Oh, I got, I got rid of all that shit. Now, once I did that, once I did that budgeting and I got everything gone, I went from that, say, roughly $3,500 a month to, okay, man, I'm only spending fifteen. dollars I'm able to keep 2000 Yeah, I might have to live like nobody else. Since you guys love to compare me to, to like a ghetto Dave Ramsey, I might have to live like nobody else. So later I can live like nobody else. I'm going to have to come up with my own saying. I can't be using that. I, I can't. But I, that's the truth, though. So a lot of his information is very good, but it's not practical for people on low incomes. But look at that. I, I, I got thirty five hundred bucks a month coming in. All I, I didn't even have to go work harder. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to say goodbye to half my damn list of bullshit. And now I'm saving $2,000 a month. I'm serious, guys. When I cut out freaking alcohol and cigarettes from my life, I actually have that wrote down somewhere. I don't have it in front of me. But when I cut out alcohol and cigarettes, I want to say that it was, guys, it was around like six or $7,000 a year that I was able to keep of my income. It was like six or 7000 Pay attention to those things. Look at those things. Break it down in that manner and be serious. If you're not serious, man, it ain't going to work. Just being honest. If you can't kick the cigarettes, if you can't freaking kick the the, the weed or the alcohol or whatever, it's not going to work, guys. It's not. You're going to have to dump that shit and start stacking cash. I hope that helps. I, I really hope I've explained budgeting well. We could circle back around to do this later at a later date. You know, I, I sometimes and it's not me repeating myself, guys, um, on the actual video. If I repeat myself is because I'm trying to beat it into your head. And if if um, if you see me make a very similar video, it's because the channel has grown. If you see me repeating a video from the past, the channel has grown. I'm talking to the masses, so I have to get back to the basics. We have to cover credit and budgeting. I haven't even done a credit and budgeting video, so thank you guys. I appreciate that for bringing that to me. That you, If you guys have anything else like this, I, I would love to do stuff like that for you. I don't mind, but that is what credit is. Your credit is an imaginary number that the banking system gave you to see how reliable you are to repay a loan. You do need to focus on it because you live on planet Earth. But if you operate like I do, I'm telling you now, I'm being straight transparent. I have good credit. I have job history and I have cash. I built a trifecta for myself in the very beginning. I didn't give it when I was broke. I did not give a shit about credit. I knew that I needed to break the cycle and that cycle was going to be broke with a job with a job that I could handle for a long period of time three to five years and stacking cash. Because if you don't stack cash, you're going to find yourself in a repetitive cycle, never ending of I paid off debt. I need money. I paid off debt. I need money. You're going to find yourself in this cycle over and over and over again. You have to break the cycle. You have to cut the head off of the snake. And the best way that I found that I did, could do that was to disappear, not pay the credit, which I wasn't. No, but not just to disappear, not pay that freaking credit for a while. I was already broke. I didn't have anything. There was nothing they could take from me. You know what I'm saying? So when you're homeless, when you have nothing, when, when you have absolutely nothing, there's nothing they could take. Change your phone number, change your email and get serious. Get locked in. 2025 is around the corner. If you're 100 percent broke and you have nothing, get locked in. In 2030, you'll be living a whole new life, guys, a whole new life.
If you listen to me and you do the things I'm telling you to do, I'm not talking about 401ks and Roth IRAs. When you're broke, that shit's not even on your radar, man. It's not even on your radar. If you get locked in in 2025, do what I'm telling you to do. You will wake up 2030 a brand new man or woman. It's, it's impossible not to as long as you stay locked in for those five years. It's impossible not to promise you. That's where you break the cycle. That's where you break the poverty cycle for you and your family right there. The universe is going to ask, how bad do you want it? And you're going to have to be the one that locks in for five years, maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, maybe 30 years. You're going to have to be the one to do that because every time you want to climb up to a new level on this mountain, it's going to be a whole new process. You're going to get the hell beat out of you all over again. You're going to re-enter no man's land. It's going to get real uncomfortable. Okay. So that's your credit score, an imaginary number. You want a trifecta, guys. You want a trifecta, but you got to create your budget to know what you can do. All right. You got to start doing these things. I create a budget. I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty solid at it now up here in my head. I know I got all my things. I look at them daily, but I would say whenever things were real messy for me financially, I probably created a budget, guys, shit, I, I was on it, man. I, I was probably messing with it every week. But realistically, I went to the whiteboard probably once a month. You know, I'll sit with a piece of paper and kind of, you know, doodle some things out. But realistically, I went to that whiteboard, I wiped it clean, and I started over every month. I became the CEO of my own life. Nobody cares. Nobody cares for you to think that the banking institution, that the government, that that your freaking employer, they do not care about you. All right. You're going to have to take action on your own. You're going to have to become the CEO of your own life and do the things you need to do for you and your family to get ahead. The information that I'm giving you guys to the masses is practical. It is real because I did it. Guys, I'm, I did this. I, so what I tell you to do are things that I have done. I see the comments. I don't give a shit. I, I care less. What I'm telling you to do are things that I really did, guys. There's no fluff here. There's no lie here. I can close my eyes and I can tell this same story because it really happened to me. I really did it twice. Twice. I did it twice. And for the people in the comments, there's a guy in the comments that said something like, if you did it twice, then it doesn't work. No, guy. It does. It works. I'm not telling you to be a millionaire because I'm not a millionaire. I'm not telling you how to become a millionaire. I already told you guys. I've already told you that in order for me to get to my millionaire status, for me to start seeing seven figures, I had to teach because eventually you're only going to go so far. So this is my next level. My next level looks like books. It looks like speaking. It looks like talking. It looks like writing. It looks like motivation. It looks like digging deep. It looks like early mornings and late nights. It looks like hitting the gym. It looks like grinding it out at my nine to five for 50, 60 hours a week and then coming here and working with you guys, taking one on one coaching, building my business, building my brand. This is my next level. Guys, I've already conquered the level you are at. I've already mastered it. And now I'm teaching you how to do it. I'm teaching you how to just start playing the game. I'm stepping into a new game. I'm headed towards a new tournament, a new match, a new arena. And I'm making sure that I bring you guys with me. That's what I'm doing. And I'm doing it in real time right here in front of you right now. Have great plans for the channel. Hopefully uh, I could start working with some people in the near future. I'm trying to get things. You guys know I'm not a tech guy. I'm not. I don't have the tech skills. I don't claim to. My my skills go to about Microsoft Office, Microsoft PowerPoint type stuff. I understand Excel. But when you start getting into the back rooms, guy, I don't have that. When you start getting into the back rooms of these platforms and websites, I'm doing the best to learn what I can on my own. But I don't have those skills. So I'm definitely, uh, you know, trying to seek out some form of teamwork. I really don't want partnerships. I don't know. Those are things that we'll talk about, you know, but I'm seeking out some form, something of somebody to help me in that, that area. So I'm working on that. I'm working on that. It's very confusing to me because I've always had other people to handle those types of things. So it's very confusing to me. I'm still trying to learn that because, um, 
So bear with me on that. Guys, I'm, I'm old school. Everything I still do. I love to write it out. I love to have the pen and paper. I love that. I do. That's just who I am. I, I would prefer to write pen and paper over type on this computer any day of the week. I, I love it. I, I, I read real books. I don't read on tablets. I like to turn the pages through my hands. You know, I, I just, it's something about it. The nostalgia, the life, it's just something about it. That's what I like. I like that stuff. I don't, that's what I like, guys. That's who I am. Nothing wrong with tech at all. It's the way of the future, guaranteed hands down. I just stay in my lane. You understand? And that's what you need to do. You need to stay in your lane. If your business operates better on pen and paper, then do that. Do it. I know a man right now in Paducah, Kentucky, whose whole business, and he's a multi, multi-millionaire running a multi-million dollar business. His whole business operates on pen and paper. He still prints receipts. He still gives out job orders and work orders. It's 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 insane, guys. It looks when you go in there, guys, he has not changed that business model and it works. When you go in there, it looks like it's 1985, 1995. It's what it looks like. He has not changed his business model. It is still very similar to something you would have seen in the mid mid to late 90s. And it works. It freaking works. And he's he's rolling, man. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing stopping him. He's got contracts with he partnerships with Lowe's. Uh, matter of fact, he does most of Lowe's um, windows and doors. All he's that's what he's in. He's in the windows and doors business, and he does most of Lowe's all throughout the Midwest. He runs Purdue, Kentucky, St. Louis, Nashville, um, Kansas City, <sighs> Oklahoma City. Like he's he, his company rolls that far. He's got about fifty trucks. He builds doors and windows. And he sends them all throughout Lowe's. So when you go to Lowe's and you go back in the doors and windows department, his whole business runs off. He doesn't have social media. He doesn't have none of that mess. And his entire business runs off of freaking steel, old school paper. He does old school printouts. When you go in to get your, I used to work for him years ago. When you go in, you get your work order. It's handed to you on a sheet of paper, just like that. It's printed off. It's very thin paper that he gives you. And he pushes on. He did never. He never conformed to modern society, but it didn't leave him behind. He just stayed in his lane. And I, 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 I think it was amazing. I love to see it. I'm glad that he's still alive and thriving today. I am. I'm not going to say that will work for everybody, but it damn sure worked for him. So it's like my granddaddy said: if the man in front of you can do it, you can too. But for me to step in. I have to step in through the tech side. So I'm definitely trying to build and brand some things here and learn as much as I can about this world because I've been out here in the real world for a long time and I'm trying to step into this one. Okay. So other than that, guys, I'm going to leave it here, man. I got to get myself ready, get ready for work. It was a great conversation. I really enjoyed talking to you guys. I hope I explained this and broke it down well enough for you guys to understand. Uh, if you got any questions, anything, leave it in the comments below. If you would like to hire me for one-on-one -on -one coaching, feel free to reach out. Best way to reach out is Instagram or uh, Facebook. Feel free to reach out to me there. Um, other than that, guys, man, have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.